The senator from Vermont is recognized. I thank my friend. Mr. President, uh, we've heard a lot about history on this floor. Let me just speak for a moment of very, very recent history. Just four weeks ago, members of the Senate gathered down the hallway in Statuary Hall. We gathered there to honor Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in fact, the first woman to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. Justice Ginsburg was a trailblazer, a woman who may have stood just over five feet tall, but she was a giant of the law. The nation grieved for her, not simply because she was a brilliant lawyer in justice, but because she was a fighter. And she fought for those who needed fighting for most Americans, for whom the promise of America was still just a promise. Now, I've still spoken at length about what Justice Ginsburg meant to the struggle for equality for millions of Americans. I'm not going to repeat those words today, except that say that Justice Ginsburg's life's work left our nation a more perfect union. All of us are going to be forever in her debt. <clears throat> but a day after we gathered in Statuary Hall with the nation in mourning, flags at half staff, days before Justice Ginsburg was laid to rest beside her husband in Arlington Cemetery, Days before that, the president held a celebratory ceremony to nominate her replacement. She hadn't even been buried yet. And the masks were off at that Rose Garden ceremony. In fact, if you look at the pictures, the masks were off in more ways than one. Republicans made it clear they would stop at nothing to confirm Justice Ginsburg's replacement before a presidential election just a few weeks away. Yes, the masks were off. From that moment, the confirmation process for Judge Amy Coney Barrett has been a caricature of illegitimacy. I will not dispute that the responsibility of this body to consider Justice Ginsburg's replacement to the Supreme Court. I voted on more members of the Supreme Court than anybody in this body. But this is not how we should do it. Not during such a polarizing time for our country. Just one week from a presidential election and after more than 57 million Americans have already voted. Not at the expense of every precedent and principle this institution once stood for. Not when doing so requires that half of the United States senators go back on their word, contradicting every argument they once made about Supreme Court vacancies during an election year. Not when the sprint to confirm Judge Barrett gave the Judiciary Committee just two weeks to prepare for her hearings, when the committee has afforded itself three times as long, three times as long, to vet other modern nominees to our nation's highest court. And not when records of Judge Barrett's undisclosed speeches and materials have continued to pour in even after hearings, revealing what a slipshod process this has been from start to finish. And, and not when the United States Senate of America is doing nothing, 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 to pass a desperately needed COVID relief bill. Something we could have been and should have done from July on. And every senator knows in their heart this is wrong. Senator McConnell ramming this nomination through no matter the cost, while worrying about the politics of providing relief to millions of Americans suffering during a continuing, still worsening pandemic, 225,000 Americans dead already, says everything one needs to know about the priorities of today's Republican Party. Yeah, the masks really are off. It's far from a secret why President Trump and Senate Republicans are hell-bent on confirming Judge Barrett before Election Day. 
All you have to do is look at the calendar. On November 10th, the Supreme Court will hear arguments in California versus Texas. That is a Republican-led lawsuit to strike down the Affordable Care Act. And Republicans, and certainly the president, see a Justice Barrett as an insurance policy to ensure there'll be a five-vote majority to finally strike down the law that covers all people in this country, including those with pre-existing conditions. Judiciary Committee Republicans spent last week crying foul, claiming that it's fear-mongering to claim that they see this vacancy as an opportunity to overturn the ACA. The fear-mongering and crocodile tears implies we're not talking about the facts. So let's just take a look at some basic facts. It is the Republican attorneys general who are asking the court to throw out the entire ACA, the entire Affordable Care Act. Not just part of it, but every single bit of it. It is the Trump Justice Department that has sided with the Republican-led lawsuit to throw out the Affordable Care Act, every single bit of it. And as this Republican-led Senate, in a vote just weeks ago that gave the green light to the Trump Justice Department to take this position. And keep in mind what this position means. It means that if, if it's successful, it would terminate health insurance for more than 20 million Americans. Americans in every one of our states. It would terminate the Medicaid expansion for 15 million more and it would terminate protections for 130 million Americans with pre-existing conditions. Now, while at this point, the Senate vote was not surprising. Republicans in Congress have now voted to repeal or gut the Affordable Care Act at least 70 times, 70, 7 0. As if Republicans could not be clearer about their intentions, just days ago, President Trump was asked on national television about the fate of the ACA before the Supreme Court. He said, I hope they end it. It'll be good if they end it. It's like Captain Ahab of Herman Melville's Moby Dick. Republicans have been single-mindedly obsessed with killing the ACA, this great white whale, since the moment the law was enacted. But they've failed thus far in both Congress and the courts in 70 attempts they see Judge Barrett as the final harpoon to once and for all end the law. So when, they, when Republicans plead innocent, claim they have no intention of taking away people's health care protections, Americans remember that their actions speak a lot louder than their words. And Republicans have yet another horse in this race. That's the actual race for the White House and Congress. Always one to say the quiet part out loud, President Trump has repeatedly stated his expectation that his nominee will side with him in any election-related dispute, claiming that Democrats have rigged the election, falsely labeling mail-in ballots as a scam. President Trump has said he will challenge any election loss in the courts. And that's why he says it's important we have these nine justices. He's made it very clear he wants her there in case he loses the election. Another Republican on the Judiciary Committee echoed the president claiming that this was a member of the Judiciary Committee, claiming that the entire reason they need Judge Barrett confirmed now is to ensure that no election-related dispute is deadlocked in a four-to-four decision. Now, I don't recall Republicans making this argument when they blocked Judge Merrick Garland from receiving a vote for eight months prior to the last presidential election. And just last week, we see why the Republicans are suddenly so anxious to have a ninth justice seated before Election Day. They're waging an all-out war in the courts right now with the goal of disenfranchising as many minority, poor, elderly, vulnerable, and young voters as possible. Knowing that voters are relying on mail-in ballots in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, Republicans are unapologetically fighting state and local attempts to make voting, absentee voting, easier. 
And it's clear the Republicans believe Judge Barrett and the court will help them to suppress the vote. Last week, deadlocked four to four, the Supreme Court left in place a Pennsylvania Supreme Court order requiring officials to count absentee ballots received within three days of the election if postmarked by the election. And yesterday, anticipating Judge Barrett's imminent confirmation may tip the scale it should be there to help the president in an election dispute, the Pennsylvania Republican Party asked the Supreme Court to review the case again less than a week after they lost it. Unfortunately, Judge Barrett said nothing during her hearings last week to assuage the American people. This should be anything but a green light for the deeply harmful and popular objectives of President Trump. She's repeatedly declined to distance herself from her litany of anti-ACA comments and writings. She's repeatedly declined to confirm whether she'd follow Supreme Court precedent on the, on the uh, Affordable Care Act. She once wrote, however a cagey of justice may be at the nomination stage, her approach to the Constitution becomes evident in what she writes. Well, if, if that's true, then what she's written, she's opposed to the Affordable Care Act. And my concern only grew when she refused to commit herself to recuse from any election-related dispute. President Trump has put her in an unenviable position. He's made it clear he wants her on there in case there's an election dispute. He's making it impossible for Americans not to question her impartiality should she vote in his favor in an election dispute. If she votes to throw the election for President Trump, I fear not just the court, but our democracy itself would suffer an existential blow to its legitimacy. And my concern grew into alarm when Judge Barrett refused to affirm even the most basic tenets of our democracy. She would not affirm to me that a president must comply with a court order, and the Supreme Court has the final word, something every one of us learned in law school. She would not state whether the president can unilaterally postpone a presidential election, even though the law clearly states you cannot. She would not confirm to me whether our Constitution contemplates a peaceful transition of power, notwithstanding the 20th Amendment. Well, she refused to say much of anything about everything. She refused to answer over 100 questions during the hearings, 150 Questions afterward, she invoked what she called the Ginsburg Rule. Well, I was there for Justice Ginsburg's hearing. Justice Ginsburg gave detailed answers on a number of constitutional issues. She took clear positions on dozens and dozens of cases during her hearing. Stark contrast, Judge Barrett wouldn't even restate, not even comment on or discuss settled law. I've never seen such top to bottom recusal. And I worry what we've seen here, what it does to the Senate Judiciary Committee's confirmation process. I worry what politicizing the Supreme Court this way does for the faith Americans have in all our federal courts. Republican arguments comes down to one thing. We have the votes, so anything goes. Having the power to do something does not make it right. Might does not necessarily make right. When the word of a senator, the, when the word of the Senate leader is rendered meaningless, when the words, advice, and consent are rendered meaningless, then this institution will be rendered meaningless. Justice Ginsburg left us with a more equal and more perfect union. She stood up for the rights of minorities, the rights of the LGBTQ community, the rights of all those who have been marginalized. Judge Barrett have confirmed or not. I believe that Justice Barrett would set the clock back decades on all the rights that Americans have fought so hard to achieve and protect. I have said that Justice Ginsburg would have dissented from this process. The least I can do is joined her in that dissent. I will vote no. I ask consent that my full statement be included in the record. Without objection.